best time of my life. Family and the kids go to bed in bed. <laughs> um, while I've got 10 minutes before I go to train here, I saw I would do a video on the recovery, the important aspects of why, how, uh, and when to recover. Mainly because of. Let me shut my mic so I can hear. I want to be pretty professional. Does that look professional enough? Mainly because recently I had a lot of success with recovery and I just want to share why this is the one of the most important things to do with training. So, recovery. R E C V O R Y Rover Rovery. When we say the word recovery, what comes to my mind first? I don't know about you, but when I first started, I didn't really play with the idea. I didn't care about it. Now the reason I didn't care about it was because to me recovery was just not feeling sore the next day. Which to me, I mean, we're not pussies. You know, we can train through the pain. If you're a bit sore, it's not a big deal. You can train, you know? But then it's the essence of understanding that recovery is actually growth. It's growing, right? So you've damaged your muscles, cells, so they then need to adapt and recover so they can deal with that load or that stress you put on the next time. So therefore, the said amount of recovery days it takes for that muscle to grow, will grow back bigger, and then the progression of strength will, will carry on, or endurance, whatever the game is. So it's repairing. So repairing equals bigger. So the word should kind of be redefined. Recovery is growth. Repairing is bigger. Now, they're not actually the English Oxford definitions, but if we're going to talk like meatheads, I'd say it's a good place to start. Yeah, I'd say that's good. Now, <sighs> the level uh, at the minute I'm at, no, I'm not at a pro level. I compete naturally, but, you know, uh, level in terms of how long I've been doing this for, um, it does make a difference, these tiny details for focusing on recovery more. Um, and the recovery aspect, you know, if it's me not feeling sore the next day, that is the difference between an effective workout and a completely non-existent one, and one that would not yield any benefits or rewards whatsoever and wouldn't allow me to progress. So these things, these things are very important when it comes to the world of recovery, and that's why you want to focus very, very carefully on it. You know, I mean, if you're hitting a muscle group and you know a couple of days later you're still feeling sore, um, and you're training through it, then you're going to fall into areas of overtraining. Um, which is a whole different topic. You're going to fall into areas where you're not, you haven't allowed the muscle to complete its full cycle of recovery, um, and then you're falling into territory of just degressing instead of progressing. Now, recovery is semantics because every person's going to have a different level of recovery. Um, some are going to be greater than others, some are going to be lesser than others. So that's why, in terms of when you're finding your perfect uh, genetic uh, blueprint, you know, if if, if God could look at your DNA blueprint and if God was your PT and your, and your coach and gave you, he would be able to give you the perfect, if you believe in God. Darwin would be able to give you the perfect blueprint, which would be, okay, well, your recovery system, your quads are unique. They recover every two days. So we're going to hit these every two days. Your chest fiber takes about four days. Mm. So the semantics there, now everyone's slightly different. If we had that, the world would be perfect, but we don't. So in essence, when you're doing this, a lot of it is social experiments. You're going to have to listen to your body. Um, and that doesn't mean training through severe pain just for the sake of it, um, because there's a balance between the frequency of how often you can hit things and also assuring that you're... Dorian Yates had a good analogy of recovery, the sandpaper analogy. You scoop your hand really fast, it gets bloody. But when you... If you leave it for a day, callus will grow, it will get harder. But... If you decide to scrape that again, very fast and swiftly after, it's gonna fuck up the recovery process and you're gonna make it even worse. Muscle damage and growth is the exact same premise in my estimation, and it is, because I say so. So um, let's look at the uh, three different focus topics of the three different methods to recover. Now, I assume when you opened this video, you were interested. You were either a person that 
the they want to be completely optimal their progress has slowed down or stopped they're starting to feel sore getting sick easier joint pains fatigue um so you're going to want to really pay close attention to these three methods now the three methods are you're probably going to want to implement them all at some point but certainly you know breaking them down is easier it tastes like the ball's a wee bit itchy okay it's honest so first one rest days you probably already have these somewhere in your program what's a rest day well it's the gaps between the days you train that's that's easy peasy japanese you can't say japanese lemon squeezy okay so uh you're on a five day week training day one is the tits day two is the legs day three maybe it's a nap maybe it's recovery or maybe it's back bare back and then thursday you, you take it off you know it's the gaps in between that that's the gaps that allow you to be able to a progress recover them body parts heal for the next workout um and b just allow you to essentially not feel damaged the next time you hit them so that's rest days everyone knows about that they're dead easy then the second method is deload days or deload weeks right now what's a deload well it's in the method it's, it's in the uh the word itself isn't it deload you're taking the weight off so say for example let's give an example your max where the fuck is this top war okay, so your max squat say you're squatting i don't know four plates a size 180 kilo four six five reps right that's your big working set right on a deload you would maybe deduct 40 percent off that maybe even 50 percent off that and just you know go go through the movements mainly the goal being to a, allow your body to catch up with any of the damage because if you're doing that constantly cruising like that for weeks on end the body is eventually a not going to get the results yield the same results from it most studies show and b your joints are just going to be completely beat up and you're not going to be able to keep that type of intensity up so every four to five weeks i used to do every 10 weeks but that's obscure i would say every four or five weeks you would have a deload week or deload days you know where you see fit where you just take, take the weight back move it for the movements focus on the tempo and the form again make sure nothing's f falling apart with them then weeks within that that allows more blood to get to the muscles blood equals nutrition flow nutrition to get there it allows the muscles to heal faster and recover and you'll feel a lot more greasy and slicky around the joints and the wheels so that's deloading and very popular and once you start implementing those in the results are quite different you'll notice i mean believe me even taking a day off or two days that you may be having in a while or deloading two days later you'll look at yourself and you'll not only look fuller you'll feel fuller you'll recover much greater and you'll seriously be ready for the next day ahead um so that's the deload aspect of it okay last one recovery weeks now for the gym lovers and the addicts it sounds uh it sounds shit please take a seat it sounds uh boring because if you enjoy training then the idea of taking a full week off is quite hard now when i say take a week off i, I don't mean necessarily do nothing i mean you can still do cardio or maybe the odd very very light full body here and there for two days and when i say light i mean maybe even lighter than the drops the drop uh bat, the deload um so that would be a recovery week now it's hard because people love going to the gym but if you want to take this seriously and be efficient the recovery weeks i implement these every 10 to 11 weeks because by the 10th 11th week i know i'm starting to overtrain and the reason i know that is people say it doesn't exist well by the 10th and 11th week every cycle i take my joints are starting to feel completely beat up my immune system starts to slow down i get everything under the sun um my my progress starts to waver everything and quite notably so once i take the recovery week come back in deload it and then go back to a normal strength progression things go great it's just getting past the mental block of that idea now one thing i would say is in recovery week there's more to life than training at the moment it's going to feel like that you know you are everything and you're going to be the next dorian yates or ronnie coleman or flex wheeler or you just want to lose weight and that's your big main hobby and focus which is great amazing 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 interesting hobby to have and it's very vital but there is more to life and have more 
skills and trades under your belt. Learn something new, you know, be more creative. Um, do something, you know, spend time with the family. And the recovery weeks and, you know, adding in an extra day of recovery here and there are really just gonna allow you. It's really just gonna allow you to actually recover very well and not make stupid mistakes like that. Stupid fucking mistakes like that. Anyway, what I would suggest is implement those three things. If you're not having a rest day, if you're going straight, implement the rest days strategically. Very strategically, place them like landmines around the place. Know exactly when you need it. If you're starting to feel beat up by Wednesday, take it Wednesday. If Wednesday's still good to go and you mean it's Thursday, place it Thursday. You know, be very strategic. You know, you're your own experiment here. You're gonna really need to listen to yourself or get a coach. Um, the deloads, you, everyone should be progressing strength. You should be getting stronger. I don't care what the goal is. If it's, well, if it's endurance training is different, but if it's bodybuilding or, or strength from whatever, or powerlifting, strong, strength is the goal. So you will need a deload at some point. And then eventually recovery week. If people don't like the idea of that, try it once. You may feel great after it. Um, if not, then just deload a whole week again. And uh, it should you leave the same kind of results. So if there's any questions, feel free to contact me on it or drop a comment under the video. Um, I'll go into more greater details and down the line of specific recoveries and, and the science behind it. But for now, just understand that your main shit is recovery, okay? For physique, trying to build a physique and trying to look good naked, it's to get in, damage the muscles what you need to, come out again and learn to recover. This is not an endurance game. This is not, you know, who's next bigger? This is get in, do what needs to be done, get out and learn to recover. And recovery is your key. I don't care how many gimpy teen girl Instagram cover stories you see of recovery is key. You is you, you're only competitive as you. Recovery is key. How cliche it is, it is it is the key to looking good naked. Anyway, that's been caused in the Oxen. I'll see you next time.